Hey everybody, this is Bruce from Printavo, Simple Shop Management Software. Today we've got a very special guest with us, Max Hellman from Family Industries over in LA. Welcome, Max. What's up, Bruce? How you doing? Great, great. So Max has a really cool story that I want to share with everyone here. And just from his beginning in 2009 to where he is today is just a lot of, of ups and downs. And, and I think a lot of people can relate, especially to a bunch of these. So um, first, just where are you guys at right now? How, how many people do you have? Where are you at revenue wise? So people can get a sense of your size. Um, right now there's 25 staff in house. So, you know, we do a couple automatic presses, that kind of stuff. Um, revenue wise, it's, you know, seven, seven figures, middle seven figures uh, per year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pushing up every year. We've, we've actually increased revenue every single year since 2009. So there's never been a year where we've actually gone down. So every year we keep growing. And, uh, you know, I think we can attribute that just to, to having customer service and, and really trying to push to be the best. That's awesome. Now, are you guys focusing on one area of printing right now? Or are you guys doing a whole bunch of stuff? I see a bunch of posters behind you guys too. We do kind of a little bit of everything here. Um, you know, the one thing we try to do is be accessible to people in Los Angeles. Um, a lot of Los Angeles is fashion brands and, you know, people who try to undercut printing prices and just really, really don't care about the end product. Uh, what we do is we make it kind of like a customer interaction based company. So everybody's going to get, you know, knowledge, um, you know, the best service from top to bottom. So when they come in 24 pieces, 200,000 pieces, whatever the order may be, we're going to take care of you the entire time. Gotcha. Very cool. And where would you say the majority, is there a majority of your revenue comes from one channel or? It's tough to say, um, you know, if this is we're a little bit set up a little bit different than most other screen printing companies where we do have uh, the advanced screen printing portion. So half of our revenue probably comes from screen printing on site at events, and then half of the revenue comes from in house printing. So it's almost split up into two businesses that kind of combine into one. Um, they overlap in a sense, but at the same time they operate almost as two you know different. Uh, models completely so the live events walk me through that uh are we talking like festivals and those types or, or schools or what festivals conventions uh, you know little parties big parties uh you know side side events we don't do a sales model on site so when we're showing up on site we're not selling shirts for people. that that's something we don't do there's plenty of those out there what we do is we have a customer experience so you show up on site at an event you get a takeaway uh, an item that's kind of something that uh, people remember uh, the event by. Um, mm -hmm. Some people have never seen screen printing done before in person, so it blows their mind when they see it on site. Like, wow, I just created a shirt. I got to pick the placement of the designs, the designs, um, and they wear they'll they'll wear those shirts after the event rather than sure. kind of like a typical event shirt. So, um, you know, we've done events when we've had ten thousand shirts. We've had you know events where we've hundred shirts. It's you know. Tastemaker events, or it could be a bar mitzvah. You know, it's there's so many different events in between. Really, that's pretty interesting. The only time I've really seen live printers was back when I was in college. It was like a, a festival, and they were printing out of the back of a truck. Yeah, it's there's there's so many different people doing it now. Like when we started, there was maybe a, like a couple handful of other companies who were doing it. Um, but I think that we've you know we've really got it down now. So we we do it nationally. Um, I think this month alone, there's 35 or 36 events in March where we are just different customers and clients across the country. So, really? That's crazy. Yeah. So why did you get started doing that? That's definitely different from what most people um, think to do. So I was, uh, you know, I started the company with my business partner, Alex, and um, he was working at a screen printing shop uh, and I was working at a music marketing company. And at the music marketing company, kind of on the side we uh, with a couple of friends we were screen printing in our kitchen and you know just doing our own designs just kind of having fun after work sure. and the music marketing company that I was working with needed live screen printing at an event and I was like hey you know I can do it we can bring in a little a little team totally unprepared used water based ink on site everything was drying up in the screens I think it was for a David Lynch movie movie screening and uh, totally we had like 15 people on site using uh hand dryers just to like cure the ink and whatnot. And uh, it, it kind of just blossomed from there. We kind of like 
took step by step to make it better each time. Very and, cool. Uh, so it started with the music, like kind of on the side of the music marketing, and then. I put together a program with the music marketing marketing company with Toyota to do a national screen printing like tour out of the back of their cars. So it was kind of like a thing that just step by step grew for that company, and uh, that's really how the, the screen printing got going. What is one tip to execute live printing event well? Uh, knowing how to deal with the crowd. Okay. You could be the best. You could be the best screen printer. You could. You could have the coolest setup. You could have whatever. Sure. But if you don't know how to manage a crowd on site at an event, you're totally going to be underwater. You need to be able to be quick. You need to get through a line. You need to be able to work with the event coordinators, whoever it may be. When you're on site, you have to make sure that you are taking care of every single aspect, making sure that everybody's happy walking away and that nobody walks away this morning. So more specifically, I'm just curious, like creating a line for the crowd to stand in or is it more detail like getting requests and, and dealing with I mean, screen? yeah, if, if you don't know how to queue up a line correctly, you could have a swarm of people around the screen printing station uh, and it may just be, it may take 10 minutes per person. But if you know how to queue the line correctly, you know how to explain the process so that people understand what's happening, uh, you can get through three people a minute you can you can go through these people at festivals so gotcha. you know and make each one feel like they created their own shirt cool cool and you guys loaded so for like the toyota one i'm assuming they wanted in a toyota car and yeah so you kind of pull up to the event and then you would pull out the screen printing press right in front of the car and oh, then, out of a truck and i could see yeah, it, yeah yeah exactly so out of the back of their car they had like a video game system that people could play so they wanted it to be like a party in front of a bar or a party in front of it you come out and sponsor the event so cool very neat. those are those are the humble beginnings yeah. yeah no that's really cool to hear so uh max tell me a little bit about how you guys got going i mean 2009 so about eight or so years ago to you know now doing seven figures that's awesome awesome growth 25 or so people tell me about the beginning so on the side uh it kind of became apparent that we were getting more and more orders because we were on site at these events uh and people would hit us up say hey we need 200 shirts we need 25 shirts so i had this tiny back shed it was no bigger than like eight feet by eight feet and uh Alex, my business partner, and I just you know, said, hey, let's start printing for other people rather than doing our own designs. And uh, in that little shed, we'd crank out you know, shirt orders every night after work at the other jobs. Yeah. And, uh, this is like a four by four uh, press pack? A magnet press. Do you ever oh. see one of those? Like one of the ones that would clink up and sometimes if you let it go, every single screen would come down and the squeegees would go flying. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Had, With the springs. Were, and... Oh man, we've, we had some bad experiences with those. Um, so that was, we were using a flash dryer too. So we had put it, we'd have a uh, one pallet, we'd do the design on the one pallet and then we would move to a flash dryer that was on a table. We would put the shirt underneath the flash dryer and print the other one while we were going. So it was this, just, just a mess, chemicals everywhere, you know, trying to spray down the screens to clean because we didn't have a wash out or anything like that. So, um, that just, it, we, we focused on making sure the prints were still good, even with the circumstances. And uh, it kind of became apparent to my bosses that maybe I wasn't as focused as much at work as I should have been anymore. And he kind of gave me a push and said, look, I think you should go do the screen printing. I'm going to let you go from the job. So it was at the end of 2009 that he was like, all right, go do it. You're out. Um, you know, I wish you the best. Yeah, was that and, a surprise to you, or were you kind of expecting uh, him to do that? I thought like it was common. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's never fun yeah, getting let go of yeah. at a job. Uh, but he understood what we were doing too, and he kind of, we still work together with his company, so he'll play sure orders with us nowadays. Um, and I got let go, so I went to Alex, and I was like, Alex, I have no job. I'm done. I'm going to do this full time. He's like, Wow, ah, man, that's tough. I don't know if we can do it or not. Yeah. The company he was working for, no, no longer than a week later went under so he got let go of that same exact week and he hit me up the week later he's like i don't have no job either anymore and we're like all right let's do this let's let's do this full time so we had found a garage space that was a little bit bigger than our back shed and we had a bought a riley hopkins uh what i think it was like a, a six color four station uh with the money that we had saved up in the back shed yeah and, um, you know just started doing the jobs from there so were you and, uh, printing full time? Were, were you printing before, yeah, just nights and weekends, or are you like running home at lunch too to squeeze out a job? 
Um, sometimes we'd run home. Sometimes it would be just like it was a lot of times it was nice. We had like a little clip lamp that we put up in the shed. I mean, the shed had lead paint on the walls. It was just like a super old carriage house. Okay. Uh, and we had a clip light. I'd have to, I'd have to throw. Uh, an extension cord down from my balcony down to the shed so we could get the lighting and the power and everything like that. And we'd flip the, the we'd you know bust the power at least once a night. My neighbors would get pissed off at us. So it was just like one of those things. Like it just it, it shouldn't have worked, but it ended up working out, which was insane. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So did you you guys found this six by four press on, on Craigslist or something or on a forum? We actually we just bought a brand new one. You know, okay. we had saved because we hadn't we weren't having to pay for rent at that point. So when we moved in the new space, we had saved all of our money because that's kind of where we were. We were like we really wanted a, a six four press. So we bought a new press, got the flash dryer, bought a really old conveyor dryer. I think it was for like five hundred bucks off off Craigslist. And uh, you know, started started doing out of a, a little garage space. So what was and, what was marketing like then? Uh, you know, were you guys just kind of like the, the go-to T-shirt guys in the area, or were yeah. you actually pushing stuff out that hey, we're this is our capabilities? Uh, you know, marketing was always on our end. It's been so nice because of the live events. So many people see us on site at the events, and we can bring those customers in. So when we're small like that. People would say, oh, I need T-shirts. Be like, okay, hit us up. We have a shop too, so they come down to the oh, garage. Oh, gotcha. And this was when it was just Alex and myself. And then eventually, we finally made enough money, so we were able to hire our first employee. Okay. And he was a really, he was a really, really good printer, and it gave us a little bit more time to focus on this, on the actual business side of things, which we weren't really able to do before that. And we shared a little desk. Alex and I had computers right next to each other. And he would sit right next to me. I mean, no, no more than six inches away from each other, just sitting there typing on our computers and, and kind of trying to get the business going. How did you find this first guy? Was it a friend or Craigslist? That was actually Craigslist. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and yeah. you were actually asking for someone who knew how to print too, and they found you found knew, that. Knew how to print. He came down with his little dog, and uh, we said, uh, "Hey, set up this job. Let's see if you can print." And he set it up and print. And then he was he was with us for I think six or seven years. Uh, wow. Great, great printer. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so you posted that. You guys started going. You had your first employee. Um, kind of where did it go from there? I mean, what was the next step? Because there's definitely these stages that we see time and time again, right? It's the garage type setup, hiring the first couple people. Yeah. And then it transitions to like, okay, this is actually legit. We, you know, we got to kind of, you know, structure this. Yeah. L- luckily in Los Angeles, we had the benefit that there's places that burn screens for you here that are just strictly burning screens or, you know, that sell ink to consumers, whatever it is. So we, we were able to kind of outsource our screen burning for a long time. So really? we didn't have to buy, the, buy all that stuff. So we we kind of built it up as we went. And, you know, Alex and I have kind of a thing. We said we never like try to push outside of the walls that we're in. So we're always working within the constraints that we have. Um, and at that point, uh, you know, we kept saving up money. I mean, we were bare bones, like neither of us were taking any cut from the business, always just putting it back in. So, you know, by the time taxes would come around or something like that, we'd owe the, you know, owe taxes and then we'd, we'd be kind of in a bad place because we didn't have money to pay, pay the taxes and whatnot. You know, that, that worked out over the years. But, uh, you know, I think the customer service thing, we really just kept making sure that everybody who came through to the shop was taken care of and I think the biggest thing for us as growth was concerned in the first few years was word of mouth um, you know it's not easy to find somebody who, who will explain the screen printing process to you who will walk you through every step of the way who will help you with your art who will help you choose the garment whatever it is there's not a lot of places you can just go into and you know have a somebody just walk you through everything yeah so just going way over the top with them and yeah. making sure they remember you that way yeah, especially and especially when you're trying to grow like that, you you like you go above and beyond everything to really keep that client and get like the next person to come in and make sure everybody's happy. Uh, I mean, we we almost lost the entire business though with one of our clients submitted a design and they approved it. Everything was fine, and we we printed the entire run. I think it was our biggest order at that point. I think it was like fifteen hundred shirts or something like that. And we had just finished the design, and I looked at the design and I looked over at Alex and I was like. I think this is the wrong artwork. I think they sent us the wrong thing. And we were, I guess we were supposed to send them a photo proof. And the design was like a little bit off. And 
we had spent like a week doing this job just because that was when we were a little bit slower. Uh -huh. And we almost just at that point had to give it up. And I think that was like middle of 2010. And luckily the client was understanding and still wanted the order. So they, they took some responsibility on it. But there's things like that that happen early on that you have to navigate through. Yeah, very big. I remember, uh, so obviously before Printavo, I was running a print shop too, which is kind of where this came out of, but we had a very similar situation, except the artwork was just placed incorrectly. It was just way too small on the side, and that's what we thought they were under the impression. But again, you know, when you're super early, the proof, like, we didn't have the great process. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we, we just printed the whole thing all over again. Yeah, uh, it, makes it, it makes it really tough when you don't have anything to like base it off of and that was kind of it wasn't i want to say like the early days of emailing back and forth but there was no systems there were no systems in place that allowed you to to send over proofs like that minus a pdf or something and it was always like it could get lost in an email or maybe it wasn't you know there's just things that didn't really work out yeah no absolutely very cool so so customer service being huge Especially as you know, it's hard when you don't have the name or the brand or anything just yet um, and growing off that, which I think is so important, especially as you do get bigger too. People tend to kind of forget about that a little bit or be a little bit more lax on it. But um, now after that, say, you know, kind of the middle, talk to us about different growing pains that you guys are encountering as you say reach five people. The, the growing pains that I think are the hardest to take on is it, it's when you need to hire somebody else, but you may not, you may not have the money at that point. Uh, and that always made it tough for us. Um, so you're like, hey, we need a guy to, to burn screens. We need a, a screen room. Uh, sure. Or we need another uh, manual printer. Or we need... Uh, you know, it just was, it's just one thing after another. Oh, we need a production manager. Just any time down the line, it's just making that leap and saying, uh, you know, making that leap to the next step and saying, okay, we're going to hire them. Let's just hope this works out. I know there's space for them here, but I don't know if we're going to be able to make the money back on that end. So um, how do you do that? How did you, did you say, okay, look, we need to just play you know, X amount of shirts more to be able to cover this guy's salary and catch up yeah. to it by the end of the year? You know, what we did, uh, we just had to take cuts out of our own paychecks. You know, we, we said, we're going to cut back on what we're making. We're going to make sure that everybody else is taken care of first. Um, let's make sure that the entire business is set up so that we have something that runs in a way that allows us down the line to be able to, you know, be a healthy size business. Gotcha. Okay, so you guys went back and, and cut in on yours and anything else I'm sure you could find that you could cut out. And yeah. yeah, I mean, that at that point we had cut out other people burning screens, like the little shops in LA that could burn screens for you. We had, you know, we bought our washout booth and, you know, we, I think we found like 300 wood screens for 100 bucks or something like that. So we had all these... Oh, they're just the worst screens possible. I mean, they're warped in ways, but you know, you, you pick out the good ones and put those aside and reuse those as much as you can. And then the other ones you kind of have to toss to the side and, and recycle. What would you say was one of the biggest hires for you? Was it a specific person or a specific role that really you, you felt made a bigger leap than the others? Um, I think the, the bigger leaps um, on our end, I think there's there's been a few. Um, one was getting an automatic press, um, and that, that was a little bit down the line, but that allowed, uh, you know, the screen printers to really do their job and, and allowed them to speed everything up and, you know, it's less tiresome, uh, to run an auto than a manual all day. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a customer service rep, um, definitely helps out in, you know, making sure that everybody's taken care of, you know, anybody that walks through the door at our shop for, you know the showroom and whatnot can be taken care of. Uh, and then I think, I mean, it, it's so tough because every single portion of the shop is so important and integral to one part or the other. You know, if you have a production manager, uh, making sure that everything's being overseen on the floor, uh, you know, and it lets them focus on that and us to focus on the business. So it's like, it's hard to pinpoint one. Yeah, gotcha. No, that's very interesting. Um, Buying the first auto, what, what were you guys as a company revenue? Do you remember revenue and employee wise? Probably like five hundred thousand a year at that okay. point, 
And uh, what was the trigger that we were like, all right, let's do like the bullet? We had a fourteen thousand piece tote bag order from a customer. Okay. And said, hey, we need this order by this time. And we said, sure, we can do it. So what I, I, at that point, you're in the back of your head, you're saying, okay, now we got to get an auto. We have to order from the customer, but we got to have an auto. We had some money saved up a little bit more. So we had all cash and we bought this old workhorse press. And this thing was just a monster. It hadn't been serviced in years. And the pistons on the inside, it was like the loudest press. It, it actually jumped across the floor <laughs> because it hadn't been set up. So we're in there. And we'd start on one end of our shop, and then the auto had danced to the other side of the floor. Really? We were just loading these tote bags, just just doing this order. So oh my I think gosh. that, even though it was on the auto, I think that order still took us a week and a half or something like that because the press was just so bad. But that prompted us to get the auto. And then we kind of honed in the settings on the auto, and we ended up getting uh, about a 350,000 piece order through Samsung, yeah. just yeah. single yeah. color left chest, single color back. And I think we had that order going on for about two months on just the single old uh, workhorse press. One color, and that's about all the press can do, so one color front and one color back. Unbelievable, 350,000 pieces. We just had these trucks coming in and out, and in and out. We had to hire a night shift. It was just this whole thing that we had never experienced before. But what happened with that is that once we had that order with uh, Samsung, is that we just said, you know, this press doesn't work anymore. And we hit uh, Ryan up from uh, from Ryanet, and we said we want one of the the, uh, the S Rock presses, and he's like, all right, cool, uh, let's work out a play- payment plan. And said, no, we're gonna put it on the Amex, we're gonna pay it off because we just had this Samsung order, we just want to take care of it, get it installed. So I think we had the first uh, S Rock press from Ryan installed in the U.S. Maybe it was the second one, but that was a couple years back that we had kind of just got everything set up. So it was like it just. There's those moments that you have to take the opportunity with to yeah. decide which way you want the business to go, and that was one of them. Where I said, "All right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna buy that press, and we're just gonna get it." That's awesome. So, w- that's crazy. I was actually just talking with another shop who had a very similar circumstance where they got a fifty, sixty thousand shirt order very early on in the business too, and they used that to buy the auto and kind of launch the uh, the larger orders. Now. Where, because now, now I can hear people saying, well, how the heck do I get a, you know, 10, 300,000 or whatever piece order? Where did that come from? Was it out of the blue? Is it networking through people? It, okay. So like I said, there's a live stream for anything. We have been working with another company uh, who's a marketing company and one of their big clients is Samsung. So what happened is they needed shirts for this whole entire U.S. activation that was happening and. They had, they had gotten in contact with us. We had taken care of them every single time we worked orders, 24-piece orders for T-Mobile or you know, an order because one of their staff was having a birthday party, so we are doing these small runs for them. So when time came, I was able to say, we can do this order. Again, not having the right equipment to do it. I mean, we did, but we, we really didn't. But with the customer service side, kind of being able to say, look, we've taken care of you before, we're going to take care of you now, we'll get this done, and we, we did it. You know, and I think that was from a past client who knew that we were able to do so. See, yeah, yeah. I tell people too, don't shy away from the small ones. Literally exact same story yeah. was, uh, I think it was a wife, um, and then her husband, he, he worked somewhere else, and they ordered a massive order from that one. Yeah. And then t- you, you see people who come back, you know, and like, we like to help people build whatever they're doing, so it's it's a matter of just making sure you 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 keep them, uh, you be honest with them and say you know if somebody's coming in for their first order with like a, a seven color front and seven color back and they want to sell the shirts, we'll tell them we'll be like we think you're doing the wrong thing here. The people that we see come back or who are successful time and time again start simple and eventually they step by step they'll grow their business by being smart about what they're printing onto their shirts so if they're trying to start a brand. Do one color, two color front, keep the, the finishings really, really simple. Yeah. Next time you come back and you sell all those shirts, then you start adding that stuff in. And the next time you can get the bagging, and the next time you can add 300 pieces in. Or, you know what I mean? It's like we want to help you grow the brand when you come in here. So we're, we're happy to work with them. And the people that we see that have that success, you know, that's something that like we, we have the knowledge of just knowing on the other side of it. Sure. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, when you guys got the second auto 
you sorry. kept the first one, right? Or did you sell yeah. that one? Okay. We sold, well, actually, we, we kept the other one. Uh, and like I said, that thing was good for one colors. So we, we sold that pretty soon after. And then we had the, the one rock for a little bit. And then we decided we needed the other one and a bigger gas dryer just because we're outputting so many different orders per day. Mm -hmm. um, so we got a, a second rock and the rock tunnel dryer. Got it. Very cool. Now, uh, how much do you say would you work uh, every week? How many hours? Um, our guys, our staff, our team. Uh, I don't say guys because we do have good girls here too. Uh, our team is here from about eight to five every day. Okay. And how do you? What are some tips on managing a team like that? And you know, you start to have to deal with more human resources and people than it is, you know, being in there uh, with production operations and flow and sales and things. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the one thing that, like, I, I guess I wasn't prepared for, um, you know, it's, there's a management of personalities when you have so many people together in a shop. So you do get to those things like the HR issues or things that happen in the shop, like that you would, you know, somebody got into a fight with another guy because they didn't get along or something like that. You have to prepare for those. Um, so I, I think that uh, the the side that kind of helped us in regards to, to everything like that is is the production manager dealing with uh, you know the production or the art team dealing with art or you know the live team being able to work with the live you know the live screen printing side um, or the you know the finishing team is working on finishing so there's just different you create uh little different uh sections in mm -hmm. in the shop itself and you kind of you don't micromanage anyone we, we don't like micromanagement it doesn't work yeah. we let everybody kind of be themselves here and do what they do best and i think that's kind of how we deal with the hr side or, or making sure that everybody's getting their job done don't you know don't breathe down their necks do you find yourself say setting an expectation to say okay this is the goal and you, you get there or um do you kind of check in or, or is it more like towards the first couple of months of them getting started where you're doing a lot more checking in when they start yeah we'll, we'll make sure but you know we have the attitude of expectation so we expect you to do your job we expect you to get it done and we expect you to do it correctly you know what i mean so it, there's that attitude that's there but we, we kind of step back and say, we want people who can work within that kind of, in that realm and do it themselves. We don't want, we don't want to have to you know, watch over you. We don't want to push you to do the job better. We like having people who are self, you know, they can self-service the job. You know, that they, they come up with new ideas that we can say, hey, you know what, that's, you set up this entire system. Like one of our, one of our uh, customer service reps uh, has this whole system within Printavo that none of us had ever thought about before. And he set it up and it's been absolutely incredible for people picking up, uh, you know, what orders are due, rush orders, this whole entire thing with shorthand, uh, things like that. Or, you know, he wrote a customer service handbook that I had never put together. I couldn't do anything like that. So it's like using their strengths to, to help kind of piece together the business. The customer service handbook, what is that about? It's just when a new uh, new staff starts, he can give it to them so they understand this is what these are the systems we use. It gives a rundown on how Printavo, how we use Printavo. Uh, it gives a rundown of kind of the shop, uh, the ordering process, um, you know, some of the printing process that comes in. It's more for front of house staff versus the back of house staff. But so if somebody, you know, somebody needs to do make a sale, they can reference the handbook and say, oh, this is how we make a sale, or. Uh, you know, if you're pricing something out or a guide for, you know, posters or whatever, it gives them an idea, you know, how, how the color chart works or Pantones or whatever it Ew, is. Like, that's very really cool. whole entire book, yeah. But then, uh, does he do that? Uh, is that on Google Docs that you guys keep that or do you print it out? That's on Google Docs, exactly. Okay. Awesome. So, very cool. Yeah. I've seen other companies. I mean, larger companies always have, you know, an onboarding type of flow. But, you know, it's a small, medium-sized business. It's... You yeah, see a lot where it's like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Like, you know, follow me. What this is what you uh, we need you to do. Yeah. I, well, I think with small and medium businesses, a lot of times they don't mean to do the business. They don't. It doesn't. You know, they're not. Their goal isn't for the business to get big or not not big, but sometimes it's an accident that it happens. You know, and it's like you're not prepared for those situations. Sure. And that, like you know, that's like us. You know, you kind of just fall into these things and things start to happen and you learn a lot as it's going but you can't claim that you know everything and um, you know i think for us there's been those those stages where it's like uh oh what, what are we going to do next 
And that's when you lean on the staff who's in house that has ideas and say, you know, I think we could do it this way. And, and you know, you trust your instincts with it. Yeah. How, what, uh, so you talked about hiring people based on them being motivated and, and reaching your expectations that you guys set. What are some actual interview type of things or things you look out for to gauge that? I think that's definitely one of the hardest, especially here too and in other places. It's like, you know, interviewing is, is tough and really figuring out who they are and gauging that motivation factor um, could be tricky. I mean, maybe they, they interview very well, but they're not the best, you know, at work or vice versa. Yeah, it's it is tough. Sometimes we'll do a like a trial period with people just to kind of see how they'll they'll do when they come in because okay. because screen printing. If you're bringing somebody in for the back of the house with a floor job, screen printing it's a trade. You you have to kind of know what you're doing. Uh, you know, we're happy to teach you. You know, if you want to start, you may be in the screen room or something. You kind of see the process as it grows. Yeah. But if you're hiring somebody, you want to bring in to do you know work on the auto. You want to have somebody oh, who's sorry. you know doing finishing or whatever. You need somebody who knows. The process knows, you know, how to cut out a net t- neck tag, or where it's printed, or how to make it sure it's, you know, aligned correctly, or read a CAD, or pull the, you know, the right ink off the shelf. There's a lot that goes into it. Plus, knowing how to, you know, screen print correctly, you know, whatever's involved in it. So, uh, the trial period helps us out. Somebody's hungry to learn, um, you know, and and makes that known that look, I don't know everything. I could learn in this aspect. Uh, but I bring you know X to the table, so I know a lot about water-based inks. I know a lot about mixing inks. I know a lot about how to you know uh, print specialty inks or something like that. That's always something that it intrigues us, uh, you know, and and you know references, recommendations from other shops. You know, we've had some other printers that bring people in and say, look, this guy is a good printer. Bring him in. I think he can you know step right in and not have an issue. So there's a lot of that as well. Got it. Uh, how long is that trial period? Is that a full day or a couple hours? Yeah. You know, we actually do a full week. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we do, We like to make sure that the person is going to fit, that they want to be here. Because sometimes, you know, they may not get the full, you know, production that's happening. And like, oh, this sounds like a cool job. Like, I could be here. I can do this. And by the end of the first week, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of production. I didn't realize I was going to be handling so many pieces. And they may not want to do it. So we like to make sure that they're here and they like doing the job. Interesting. And now, have you found that to work pretty well too? Like, you've seen some people that's just all right. That, that was a good try, and it, you know, we'll pass. Yeah, yeah. And and a lot of times it's mutual. Like, you know, I, I didn't realize uh, that that was going to be this way. Uh, uh, true, true. So so it works out for the benefit, I think, of both sides. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So where are you guys at now? What what are some challenges you would say at a shop your size you, you guys currently have? So space, you know, we're in, in Los Angeles is not easy to come by. Um, so we're kind of, you know, there's other things we want to get into, whether it's fulfillment or a little bit more merchandising, uh, specialty items, more into the sublimation realm of things. And then on the live side of things, we're kind of developing an app so people on site can just do, we, we do it now, but we're really trying to develop it even further, uh, custom sublimation on site for different, you know, activations and events. Um, so those are like the main facets that we're up against um, and and finding more space to be able to do all of these things together. Um, you know, we probably have another auto, but our space won't allow for it. So we just don't have enough power in the building um, to, to even entertain another auto with the heat presses and other things that we have going on at the same time. Got it. So how do you think you, you're going to kind of attack that or solve it? Are you starting to hunt around for other larger yeah, warehouses? Or? We're, we're going to get another space, so we'll probably have two two spaces working at the same time. Got it. So how, do you even, how do you even go about moving? I mean, I'm assuming there's some, some sort of moving companies that have yeah, large equipment. And, they do. They're, there's this. We've actually worked with this company a couple times before, and they just come in with a big forklift. We'll probably take all the arms off of the the presses yeah. that come with the forklift and and put up the main equipment on the back of a truck. We'll have to like catalog all the inks and then all of the showroom and everything. I mean, it's going to be a, a definite process, but I think with the people that we have here, I think it'll be a lot easier to kind of give everybody a task to to make that work. Got it. Very cool. Um, well, great. So, and, and last question too, I know you're a busy guy, is just what are you looking forward to? It sounds like the live events are a big piece still of the business and growing. 
What are you looking forward to maybe in the next couple of years here yeah. with uh, how family is growing? Um, we've, we finally got into D DTG printing a little bit. And, uh, you know, we had always said, you know, once the technology is there, we'll do it. And for, for years, it just never looked great. It hasn't, you know, it has never been up to par with screen printing. But we just got one of the F2000s from Epson. And yeah, and the, the and thing it looks Monday. awesome. Everything, every print looks cool. So we yeah. finally started saying, you know what, we'll do the single run orders. We'll do those types of things now uh, versus sending all those orders down to another shop that we are we're friends with. So we can take on even smaller jobs now that we're a little bit bigger of a company. We can handle people who want. I need to see a sample, or I want a one off, or you know, I need a, a twelve color print on ten shirts. We can handle that kind of stuff. So funneling more of that business into our current business model, I think is one thing that I'm, I'm definitely excited about. Um, and then, uh, you know, doing some more large format sublimation on various items. I think it's, sublimation is going to be really, really big coming up. I feel like it's just starting to hit, but it's been around for a long time. But I think the applications that sublimation, uh, you know, that it can go on to, I think it's it's a whole other ballgame that, that I don't think kind of hit fully cool. Very cool. And what would you see? Give one tip to someone that's looking up and be like, man, I got, you know, we're going to be just like Max in, in his shop. Uh, give something to them that, that they could take. Um, I think you just always, you always have to be on no matter what. Um, just make sure you're taking care of the customer. Uh, make sure that your, your, your prints look good, uh, that they feel welcome in the shop. And then, uh, anytime they come back or they reference or recommend somebody else, you know, take care of that person the same way because it, it does, it's, it's a word of mouth business. Screen printing is 100% word of mouth. You'll get a couple of Yelp reviews or a couple people contacting you from Googling, but I'd say a majority are going to be people that know somebody who knows somebody that needs a teacher because everybody yeah. needs a teacher. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. there's everybody, everybody wears t-shirts. There's no question about that. That's not even something that I think you can question at this point. Right. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it again, Max. This is super helpful. And uh, really, thank you for your time. And hey, thank you so much. Uh, and I'm, I just want to plug you guys because I feel like we didn't talk about Printavo at all, but the system that you have put in place for, for shops and businesses has been insanely helpful uh, for our business in growth. And I know we didn't really get to that as much, but being able to add the art send send the emails uh send invoices quotes whatever from my cell phone to a client or be at home with with a three-month-old baby and not have to be in the shop and i can say oh cool i gotta hit back my client and send it over to them i can do that from my home and not have to be in the shop it's it's made everything amazing and it's helped us grow i mean honestly good work we, we love it and we're looking forward to continuing to work together awesome sounds good yeah, yeah. i appreciate that congrats on the yeah. newborn too Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. We uh, I, I don't even really uh, tend to talk about uh, Printavo just because I love to to just really understand stories. But definitely appreciate that. And uh, well, I mean, it's we're pushing it's, forward. It's part of the story. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's one hundred percent part of the story. I, I don't want to leave that out. Like I, I want to say that if, if that is a way that you'll grow, that's another recommendation for for a way to get your shot from from the bottom up. It looks it's awesome. Clients love it. Awesome. Well, I appreciate yeah. it again, Max. Yeah. And and thank you, and, and we'll definitely be in touch. All right, perfect. Have a good one. Bye. All right, thanks.